Good afternoon. This is uh, June in Wisconsin here, 2017, and I'm still working on the drone brood method. The drone brood method involves separating the separating the bees um, in order to leave the varroa no option but to enter a drone frame. Um, that's the only frame you have in there. If you want to read more about that kind of thing, you can look at this little thing, which I found the national national bee unit from the Britain. If you Google that, you'll find it. it gives you the same principles. I had a, a link from the New Zealand beekeepers, but I, I've no longer been able to find it. That's gone offline. Now, one of the byproducts of that is you end up with a few extra queens, and the queens I put in these nukes, and then about a week ago, I took the brood, put the brood above this queen excluder, and the queen below. The brood is going to be used for the queen cells that I'm going to make. Okay, follow me. So the method the method that I'm in, I've used to make some queen cells this time is the Dave Cushman method. If you Google D-A-V-E Cushman, C-U-S-H-M-A-N, and then look at the Ben Harden method, B-E-N-H-A-R-D-E-N method. And then this talks about a method of raising queens. It uses a queen right starter and finisher. Inside this box is a in the blue box is a dummy, one there and one there to take up some space and congest the bees. Below it is a queen excluder, below that are two brood chambers and, a, and an active queen who was from uh, last year. So I'm going to open this up and show you what we got. This method, according to Ben Harden and Dave Cushman, is a variation of a method that the French use to produce royal jelly. Their idea is that the bees congested in that narrow space, finding, finding um, queen cells will finish them. And, they, and start them. And because the queen's footprint isn't there, that's supposed to help too. And so what we have here is we have a, a dummy. You can see here I put four inches. That was four inches on that side, four inches on that side. It actually was a little too small, so I made a three quarter inch spacer and put that in. And then the day, the day before I grafted, what I did was I put the queen cell bar in here to condition, the dummy box in here to condition, a frame of honey, a frame of um, pollen that I'd thawed out, I froze it earlier in the season, and a frame of young larvae. The young larvae are attracted, uh, attract the bees to feed them, and the bees work and also condition the, the, the frame so it doesn't nothing look too strange. Then the day you graft you take out the larva, you take out the, um, the frame and the cells, you graft and then you put it back together. Let's see what we have here. All right. I've just, this just two rows of cells, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, it looks like eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, well, I think it's about twenty-five cells there, which I'll double check, which I'll check that later. So you get the, gen the general idea. Now the beauty of this method is that you, you aren't really repurposing anything greatly. All you're doing is putting the box in the middle with the spacers 
and a couple of frames. The c colony continues to work as normal, continues to, to um, work in the supers, continues to make, make honey, and the congestion is, is what's used to make the queens. Um, of course, I'll continue to check the brood boxes below to ensure that there are no voluntary queen cells on there that might screw the whole thing up. But at the moment, I'm fairly pleased. All right, thank you.